want a war, you're gonna get one. Now get the gun, the trust, to my generation, I'll take the fall, the saints, and the cross of nations, and it's a saint, the gods, the fakes, the fraud, the master, the great gold, gold, come on, let's get out, listen to the music, play that fucking music, listen to my music, Another week, another battle in the Monday Night War. It's the 7th of April 1997, the night after Spring Stampede. WCW Nitro is live tonight from Huntsville, Alabama, while Raw's War is also live from Muncie, Indiana. Nitro kicks off with a quick recap of Spring Stampede, and the big story coming out of the pay-per-view was the continued turmoil within the NWO, turmoil that began last week when half the faction didn't show up to Nitro. Make sure you check out the Spring Stampede video before watching this upload so you know where WCW's at right now. And if you're all caught up, let's begin. Owen Hart and the British Bulldog of the Hart Foundation take on the Godwins in our opening Raw match, while WCW presents Hugh Morris and Conan vs Alex Wright and Psychosis. Owen and Davey bring the Maple Leaf and the Union Jack down to the ring along with their tag team belts, the European belt, and two Slammy Awards. Owen grabs a microphone as the crowd chants USA, the King of Hearts gives thanks to Big Brother Brett for bringing the family together last week, and Owen says the family feud has now ended. Shawn Michaels is going to come out a little later on for an interview, and Owen warned Shawn beforehand not to mention the hitman or talk bad about Brett in any way. If HBK rips into Brett, Owen says he'll personally take care of Shawn Michaels. During the match, Shawn Michaels cut a promo where he said he doesn't take too well to people telling him what to do. HBK says he's probably going to upset Brad Hart later on during this interview, along with a bunch of other people. Sean says it's live TV, so what can you do? The Legion of Doom also cut a promo during this match. It seems like the opening contest every week on Raw gets littered with split screen interviews. Hawk and Animal said that the first mistake Owen and Davey made was talking bad about the USA. The Road Warriors are coming after Owen and Bulldog at In Your House. And yeah, you know the drill. The match ended during the split screen promo by the way, Henry hit a slop drop on Davey, Owen broke up the cover behind the referee's back, and Owen pinned Henry without making a tag. After the bout, the Legion of Doom stopped Owen and Davey from heading back through the curtain. The Godwins then approached the tag team champions with a slop bucket, Owen and Davey duck out of the way, and the Road Warriors get slopped, leading to a brawl between the Godwins and the Legion of Doom while Owen and Davey laugh. There was nothing wrong here with this opening contest, but I enjoyed the pre-match promo and the post-match shenanigans more than the bout itself. There were no chin locks, unfortunately. Over on Nitro, Psychosis and Alex Wright sounds like an interesting tag team, but you just know Conan and Morris are gonna go over. Also, why does the Dungeon of Doom even exist at this point? If we can't work out what to do with the Horsemen, what hope does the Dungeon of Doom have? Psychosis pulled off this corkscrew attack and although we don't see the landing, it looked like it could have done some damage. We saw footage of Diamond Dallas Page arriving at the arena and he's got an ice pack on his shoulder along with a nice black eye. Page says this war with Randy Savage isn't over as he heads into the arena for Monday Nitro. Morris picks up the win with the no laughing modern moonsault. Conan hits his cradle DDT on Psychosis afterwards and he demands the referee also count Psychosis shoulders to the mat, because why not? Stone Cold Steve Austin takes on Billy Gunn next on Raw while Rey Mysterio does battle with Steve Regal. Tony Schiavone accidentally calls Mysterio Prince Iakea at the opening bell. Regal destroys Ray and the audience show their displeasure. Ray gets tossed across the ring and he rolls to the outside to try and get it together but Regal is extra vicious tonight. Must be because he lost his TV title match the previous night. We cut away to Hulk Hogan arriving at the arena, it's nice for you to show up this week Hulk. And Don Hogan says the family business will get taken care of tonight. The Hulkster says the line's gonna get drawn and those who aren't with the family 
will swim with the fishes. I think Big Sexy may have a few things to say about that, but I'm looking forward to the inevitable NWO promo later in the show. Back in the ring, Mysterio pulls off a nice double underhook counter with an arm drag takedown, a springboard dropkick sends Regal down again, and an Irish whip sends his lordship over the top rope. Regal tries to get back in via the top turnbuckle, but Ray stays on Regal and things aren't looking too good for Steve. Mysterio lands a springboard Hurricane Rana, but it only gets a two count. Regal comes back with a reverse suplex, and then we see the Regal stretch. Mysterio makes it to the ropes, but Regal won't let go of the hold. The referee ends up disqualifying Regal and awarding Mysterio the win, but Steve won't release his finisher and Ray begins losing consciousness. Here comes Prince Iakea to save the day, whoop de doo. Only Regal makes quick work of the prince and the TV champ finds himself locked in a Regal stretch also. Absolute domination from Regal, he's done a fair bit of damage here even though he lost the match, and interestingly, Prince Iakea has a TV title defense later in the show. Before the Raw match begins, Owen and Bulldog cut a backstage promo where they laugh at what happened to LOD. They want the video played back and they talk about how the people of England and the people of Canada are highly educated and only Americans would walk around holding a slop bucket. Steve Austin shows up but he's held back by officials just before he makes his way down to the ring. We also briefly went to JR and Vince McMahon at the commentary table and some edgelord in the audience had his shirt saying, Hey Elmo, tickle this, with an arrow pointing down to his crotch. The bucket hat, the cup that says fun on it, the t-shirt, the fucking face. Big Vinnie Mac should have stood up and smacked the shit out of this kid for just being that kid. The honky tonk man, who provided commentary for the opening match, comes down to the ring with Billy Gunn. So it looks like Billy is the protege. Months of searching leads the honky tonk man to Billy Gunn. I absolutely love how the Hunky Tonk Man is still carrying the guitar that Jesse James wrecked last week on Raw. Brilliant. Billy Gunn makes fun of Austin by limping around in the ring and it looks like Billy is actually dancing. Even Honky Tonk Man says Billy has all the moves. Stone Cold has enough of Billy's shit and after a few punches, Billy takes a back body drop. Check out the unusual red and black ring rope combination this week on Raw, you don't usually see him with this combination of red, black, red. Bulldog and Owen appear once again, this time via split screen, and Davey says he and Owen were just trying to have a laugh at the Legion of Doom, there was no need for Stone Cold to interrupt their promo time. Owen says if Austin wants to poke his nose into their business, then maybe Owen and Davey should poke their noses in Stone Cold's business. That's a lot of poking and a lot of business. Sounds like a Friday night with Ric Flair and the Four Horsemen. Something interesting about this Austin match is the fact he's getting away with cheating quite a lot and the fans are totally eating up everything Austin does. He's getting cheered for using underhanded tactics. Stone Cold stomps a mud hole in the Billy Gun and he flips Gun off afterwards. Stone Cold then hits a low blow and when the referee warns Austin about going low, Stone Cold flips him off afterwards. Again, this gets a huge cheer from the audience. Austin goes upstairs but Billy smashes Austin's little rattlesnake on the top turnbuckle. And ch check this out, Billy Gun flips Austin off in the corner and look at Austin's reaction afterwards. If you look close, you can see him smile and laugh a little. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, classic battle at Russell. Austin hits the Stone Cold Stunner for the victory, the audience goes nuts, and after Stone Cold goes back up the rampway, the honky tonk man gets in the ring and he tries to secure Billy Gunn as his new protege. You'd think the deal was already done seeing as Honky brought Billy down to the ring, but apparently not. Billy hasn't agreed to anything. Gunn refuses the help of the Honky Tonk Man by punching him in the face, and Honky Tonk Man's bump was so bad that it was good. It looks like the Honky Tonk Man search is gonna continue then. Billy Gunn has made it crystal clear he wants nothing to do with the greatest IC champion of all time. A fun TV bout here though, this was Austin's first televised match since WrestleMania 13, and there was no doubt at all that the fans were now firmly behind Stone Cold. The Commandant makes his Raw debut next with a promo while Ice Train takes on Chris Benoit on Nitro. So this stranger walks out on Raw calling himself the Commandant, or the Commandant as he says it. The commentary team are absolutely baffled and they have no idea who this guy is. 
The commandant says he's the leader of the Truth Commission from South Africa, and he has some big news. The next episode of Raw is War will emanate from Johannesburg. While not entirely true, next week's Raw does have matches from South Africa, along with matches from the USA and Kuwait. So next week's Reliving the War should be interesting. The commandant continues on by saying the Truth Commission want to study the long term effects of democracy upon civilians in America, and already the commission have noticed that criminals rule the USA's legal system, and only with law and order can real democracy and freedom be restored. The Truth Commission will teach Americans the true meaning of democracy, even if it has to get beaten into the entire country. The commandant says there is one man in the WWF that can speak the truth, and currently that man is in South Africa. The commandant has a videotape featuring this mystery man speaking truth and spitting hard facts, and before leaving the stage, the commandant introduces the video by Bret Hart. The hitman gives a short interview from South Africa where he says he took Shawn Michaels advice, love America or leave America. Brett decided to leave and visit a country where he would be wanted. Brett rips into Stone Cold by calling him nothing but a loser. The American fans cheer the loser like Stone Cold and they boot a guy like Brett who's done nothing but speak the truth. And when it comes to Sid, Brett says his upcoming in your house opponent has a million dollar body and a 10 cent brain half the brain that you do. We then see some footage of Bret Hart coming down to the ring in Cape Town and getting a great ovation too. The Commandant and Bret Hart were actually real life friends and it was Bret Hart who got the Commandant a job in the World Wrestling Federation. I talked about this in my Gang Wars video so check that one out if you want to learn more. Before the next WCW match, we see more NWO members arriving at the arena, so there's clearly a split here, the guys aren't travelling together anymore. Also, the Macho Man is on crutches following his main event match last night against Diamond Dallas Page. Chris Benoit had a great match at Spring Stampede against Dean Malenko and Benoit looks absolutely knackered tonight on Nitro, he looks beat up for sure. There's a great exchange early in the match where neither Train nor Benoit want to sell any knife edge chops so they just beat the shit out of each other, and it ends with Benoit running straight into a clothesline and the impact here was absolutely incredible. Do you want to see some more split screen promos? Of course you don't, but here's one anyway. The NWO meet up backstage and Hulk throws down the world title, saying it means nothing if Kevin Nash doesn't stay within the group. Nash doesn't speak. Randy Savage says that Eric Bischoff has gone soft after his actions last night at the pay per view, and Bischoff says he played it smart last night, he didn't turn soft. Nash walks away as the two sides begin arguing, nothing gets resolved here, but the group is scheduled to come down to the ring a little later on. Back in the arena, Teddy Long and Woman get on the apron and Benoit throws Train into Teddy. Benoit then wins the match with a DDT, you don't see that too often. But the commentators do not care at all, they're too busy talking about the new world order while trying to work out who's backing up Hogan and who's backing up Nash. Following the match, we see clips from last week where Hulk Hogan turned up at the movie premiere for Double Team, starring Dennis Rodman and Jean-Claude Van Damme. Hogan has an awkward meeting on the red carpet with Van Damme, and Dennis Rodman, well, Dennis stayed extremely low key tonight because he didn't want any attention at all. Hogan explains that Dennis Rodman joined the NWO because he wanted to have fun and he wanted to make a lot of money. Rodman says Ric Flair eat your heart out while showing off his gold jacket, and Dennis mentions July 13th. Nothing more is said about the date, but July 13th is Bash at the Beach 1997, so we can assume Dennis will show up at the pay per view, I just hope he wears the same outfit. Hector Guerrero vs Kevin Sullivan is up next on Nitro along with an in ring promo from the New World Order, while Shawn Michaels gets interviewed on WWF Raw. So let's see if HBK's promo goes anywhere this week. Vince McMahon wants to talk about Bret Hart attacking Sean last week, and Sean says he opened his mouth and he got beaten up. For anyone else this would be a big deal, but for the heartbreak kid, this is a usual thing. Just think about that, Sean says it's an everyday occurrence. Someone beats the shit out of Sean every day because he's an asshole. Fantastic. Bulldog and Owen watch on as HBK says he wants to get something off his chest. HBK says inside the ring and outside the ring. He and Bret Hart don't like each other, they loathe one another. 
HBK says Brett has always been a bad guy, this isn't anything new. And the hitman said that Americans made the Hart family fight each other but it was Brett who exploited his family by bringing his parents, his kids, his brothers and sisters to TV shows and Brett allowed them to get featured in storylines. If the hitman could make a buck from it, he would sell his own mother, according to Sean. Sean goes back to the early 90s when he held the IC title and Brett held the WWF title for the first time. HBK says he supported Brett and Sean played second fiddle to Brett for years because that's what you do in this business. But when it came time for Brett Hart to return the favour, the hitman done it while kicking, screaming and complaining every inch of the way. Kick or be kicking. HBK says Brett left in 1996 to see if the WWF and Shawn Michaels would fall flat without him. And Sean says the company did the best business it's done in 6 years while Brett wasn't around. That, my friends, is fucking bullshit and what's worse, Sean makes Vince McMahon agree with him. Sean then uses some colourful language while talking about Brett coming back for his fans at Survivor Series 96 and keep an eye on Vince McMahon here. It's a load of horse shit. The reason Bret Hart... Sean then says that Brett used WCW against Vince McMahon for financial gain during his time off. That's why he came back at Survivor Series, it was all for the money. A fan shouts to Sean, hey you're in it for the money too. And Sean then lights up saying he isn't short of money by any means and he decides to work for Vince McMahon because he's a hell of a guy and he deserves someone who's gonna work their ass off night in and night out. HBK says Brett can't separate wrestling from his real life, he's the hitman 24 7 and Brett is obsessed with being in the limelight way more than Shawn Michaels. This promo has been really good. HBK wraps it up by saying, all the wrestlers who come into the World Wrestling Federation and call themselves heroes or role models, they always fall short. Parents need to understand Sean isn't a role model, but if they're going to spend money for their kids to enjoy the WWF, HBK will work his ass off no matter if fans boo him or if fans cheer him. Sean then pulls out his crystal ball and he says that Brett's obsession with the WWF title and his obsession with Shawn Michaels will be his ultimate destruction. And just to wind Brett up a little more, Sean decides he's gonna have a dancing strip in the middle of the ring. Owen and Davey come out but Sean grabs a chair and he keeps the Heart Foundation at bay. There's no physicality here but this was a solid work shoot promo from Sean Michaels. I was growing a little tired of Sean recently but he done really well here and he said a few things that I'm sure Brett couldn't have been too happy about. Hector Guerrero had to deal with Jacqueline on the outside of the ring during his match with Kevin Sullivan and well he didn't do a very good job. He got thrown out of the ring twice and Jacqueline gave him a beating, leaving him with a big old red mark that was visible when Sullivan done his stupid tree of woe running knee attack. Sullivan wins with the bunny hop and if there was ever a time for Sullivan to cut a promo, it was right after this match so he could explain his actions at Spring Stampede and his relationship with Arn Anderson. But no, Kevin Sullivan will only cut a promo when he has absolutely fuck all to say. Let's move on. The NWO came out next and the whole gang is here except Scott Hall. Hogan's usual cocky demeanour has completely vanished tonight. Ted DiBiase says it's no secret there's problems within the family and it's time to sort it out one way or the other. Hollywood Hogan once again says the belt means nothing without the whole family and without Kevin Nash. But Hulk knows Kevin was complaining last week about the movie premiere and Hulk wants to know what Kevin was thinking. Nash, surprisingly, says he and Six sat in the hotel room while Hulk was off in Chicago and maybe he just got a little grouchy. And Nash also says he has no problems with Dennis Rodman being in the NWO. But pay attention to Nash's delivery if you watch this back, he stares a hole right through Hulk. And knowing what we know about these two actually not getting along too well backstage, it almost feels like Nash is delivering the promo he was told to deliver while clearly looking unhappy about doing so. Maybe I'm stretching a bit here but it's interesting to think about. Hogan wants to know where Scott Hall is and Kevin says Scott is NWO for life, he will be back. And Hogan then takes note of how Kevin is looking at him and Hulk threatens to fight the big man. Nash says back in Daytona in 1996 when Hulk joined Hall and Nash, the three of them said that NW was for life and that hasn't changed. 
Nash doesn't need to love Hulk Hogan, but he does respect him. And in Detroit, where Nash is from, a man is only as good as his word. Just like that, Nash throws up the click hand gesture and Hogan does too. Their problems have been resolved. Randy Savage says he's willing to go with the flow too. Eric Bischoff is on probation with Ted Turner, but he'll also be on probation with the Macho Man. Savage says that he himself will also be on probation with Eric Bischoff, if that works for Eric. Eric gives a too sweet like the way all the kids used to in school. And there you go, the NWO have sorted everything out. You gotta wait for another year before we get to the Wolfpack stuff, so we've got a long way to go. After all that, WCW have the absolute audacity to broadcast a Ric Flair and Roddy Piper promo, while the Headbangers take on Freddie Joe Floyd and Barry Horowitz on Raw. You get the feeling that Raw and Nitro may have peaked already, but we're only halfway through both shows. Vince McMahon announces Psycho Sid vs Mankind in tonight's Raw main event, but Psycho Sid has not shown up to the arena yet. Psycho Sid wouldn't show up again until June of 1997. Vernon White cuts a split screen promo during this match. Vernon was a UFC fighter who started off in the Pancreas Company. It was Ken Shamrock who introduced him to the world of shoot fighting and MMA. And tonight on Raw, Vernon White is going to have a match with Ken Shamrock. He says the usual stuff here, he has a chance to make history tonight in the World Wrestling Federation, blah blah blah. The Headbangers won the match with the stage dive. Over on Nitro, Flair says he and Roddy Piper bonded last week. The Hot Rod comes out and he says he just saw the NWO promo. And Piper then begins playing dueling banjos from Deliverance before saying it's now time for Piper and Flair to strike. <laughs> Flair tells Piper that Kevin Green wants to get in on the action. Piper says if Green is all about taking out the NWO, then he's welcome to join the fight. Kevin shows up, he says he's honoured to stand in the ring with Flair and Piper. And he says he's gonna train hard and get ready to team up with these two legends of the business. All three men then just fucking lose their minds and they start doing this, whatever this is. And so you can put two and two together here, with Flair announcing he'll be back in the ring for Slamboree. It looks like we'll have a Flair, Piper and Green vs New World Order match at the pay per view. Ok, so we have that Ken Shamrock vs Vernon White worked shoot fight next on Raw, while WCW presents Chris Jericho vs Dean Malenko. Dean and Chris worked a 3 minute match here, and it had quite an unusual finish. Jericho hits a superplex, but he hits the back of his head hard on the mat. Dean then rams Jericho head first into the ring post, and a kick to the head puts Jericho out of action and Dean picks up the win. Some might not have liked this, but I thought it was fine. These two though work best in longer matches as we've seen on pay per view. The quicker Jericho turns heel, the better. The Raw match is way more interesting. So basically, Vernon has showed up to Raw to be Shamrock's punching bag, though with the good relationship these two have, I think Vernon might have been happy to help his mentor out. Here's a rare case of the WWE Network showing more graphic video in comparison to the original USA Network broadcast. Ken beats up Vernon pretty bad here, Shamrock shows off his takedown skills and his submission skills. Shamrock maintains the advantage but Vernon gets the bright idea of kicking Ken right in the chest. Ken manages to mount Vernon afterwards and a ton of rights and lefts lead to White getting busted open badly, and the fight ends with Shamrock winning. Now, on the TV version, you get to see Vernon's head laid in a pool of blood, and this is it right here, this hard camera shot that you see on your screen. On the network version, well, it ain't pretty at all. I just thought it was interesting that you get a bit more in the network version in comparison to the TV version, especially when the network tries to cut out stuff like this. Shamrock says afterwards that he might have gotten a little carried away and he might have lost his temper, but that's just how it goes. Shamrock then gets interrupted by Vader, the big man comes down to the ring for his match next. We have Vader vs Frank Stiletto next on Raw, while High Voltage take on Public Enemy on Nitro. It looks like Vader is gonna fight Ken on the outside, but things get cooled down and the situation is quickly de-escalated. Handsome Frank Stiletto then gets his ass kicked by Vader, and the big man tries to show up Ken Shamrock by pulling off a submission hold of his own, the deadly armbar. 
Invader hits Filthy Frank with a German suplex, two Vader bombs, and a power bomb to end the match. McMahon wonders who would win in a fight, Shamrock or Vader, if only there was a pay per view coming up where both men could actually fight each other. Mankind cut a promo during the match saying he has a surprise tonight for The Undertaker. Mankind also has a match with Psycho Sid, but Vince McMahon says Sid still hasn't shown up for Raw. On Nitro, the Public Enemy were in control for the majority of their 3 minute match against High Voltage, but the match came to an end when Grunge put himself through a table again, just like Spring Stampede, and Rocco Rock gets pinned after taking a suplex. It was a very unceremonious end of the match. After the bout, the Public Enemy said High Voltage did well, but Nitro is in Philadelphia next week and the Public Enemy want to go back to their roots. A challenge is laid out for a Philadelphia street fight with Flyboy Rocco Rock and Johnny Grunge promising to get extreme next week on Monday Nitro. More tag team action was next on WCW with Double J and Mongo taking on Harlem Heat, while Gorilla Monsoon gives us an update on Psycho Sid. Ok, so the Nitro match, I'm going to give you a few choices here and I want you to pick the right answer. What happens in this next match? Option 1. The Horsemen win and they celebrate afterwards. Option 2. Harlem Heat win and the Horsemen promise to get revenge next week. Option 3. Harlem Heat win and the Horsemen cut a promo afterwards where they blame each other and nothing comes of it. If you picked option 3, you've been watching this series way too long. Steve McMichael didn't start the match with Jarrett, he hung out in the back while Deborah brought Double J to the ring and Jeff took a beating. Our hero Mongo then appeared and he tagged in, he wiped out Booker T and Stevie Ray but then he tagged Jarrett back in. Double J was way too tired to finish the match and Harlem Heat ended up getting the win. A horseman promo follows and nothing gets progressed. Double J says the same thing he said at Spring Stampede, he's sick and tired of being sick and tired. And Mongo cuts off Debra to say he loves pain. Serious. Mongo says he's been hit plenty of times with his magical briefcase and he likes it. It makes my teeth tingle! I love pain! Mongo then says every dog has his day and Jared and everyone else should be afraid. They should be very afraid. Fucking absolute nonsense. Gorilla Monsoon makes an announcement next. Sid has still not arrived and there's rumours flying around that he's either missed his flight or he got in a car accident. That's a big jump there, isn't it? Monsoon says he needs to have a replacement lined up in case Sid doesn't make it to the arena within the next, what, 10 minutes or so? And Gorilla says the only suitable replacement he has on the roster is Stone Cold Steve Austin. I thought this was a bit silly at first too, but remember, there's a lot of guys currently in South Africa. Steve Austin shows up and he makes it clear he isn't interested in saving Gorilla Monsoon or saving the Raw main event. Stone Cold has worked his match tonight and he's due to go home. When Gorilla says Austin will do what he's told, more or less, Austin says he'll wrap his knee brace around Gorilla's fat head. You know, these two were always entertaining as hell when they were given TV time together. It's a shame there wasn't more of this. Austin says he'll wrestle Mankind tonight if Gorilla takes Sid out of In Your House and replaces him with Stone Cold, meaning we'll get another Austin vs Heart match on pay per view. Gorilla says there's still a little time for Sid to show up, but if he doesn't, yes, Austin will wrestle Bret Hart at In Your House if he has to replace the big man in the Raw main event. Mankind cuts a promo next on Raw while Prince Ikea defends the TV title against Ultimo Dragon. Ikea was seen before the match getting taped up, remember Steve Regal gave him the Regal stretch earlier on, and so the Dragon has an advantage tonight, maybe Prince Ikea's reign of terror will come to an end. Ikea starts it off with a side headlock, he hits a shoulder block next, but he hurts himself in doing so. This leads to Ultimo Dragon immediately taking advantage with a kick to the midsection. The prince then tries to body slam Dragon but he can't lift him up. Still, Ikea tries to get out unharmed with a few pin attempts, but Dragon kicks out. We see Ultimo Dragon's kick combo next and he tries to finish it with a top rope attack, but Ikea gets the fade up. A big chop from Ikea follows and it looks like the prince is still gonna win this thing, 
But then Dragon delivers a series of hard kicks to the injured midsection that completely wreck the TV champion. The prince can't do anything after taking these kicks and Dragon decides to end it. He covers Ikea and Ultimo Dragon becomes the TV champion on Monday Nitro. It was the right call, there was no comparison between Ikea and Ultimo Dragon and Ikea's run with the belt was bad, there's no nice way to put it really. Thanks for your service though Prince Ikea, now <laughs> fuck off. On Raw, Mankind comes to the ring with Paul Bear before his match and he wants to address The Undertaker. Mankind says he and Taker have taken part in some of the most brutal matches in WWF history but it turns out that The Undertaker still doesn't know Mankind at all. The Undertaker doesn't know what it feels like to go through the hardships that Mick Foley has went through, Taker knows nothing about sitting on an airplane and smelling his own burned flesh, and he doesn't know what it's like to have his wife ask what the burning smell is when he gets home. The fireball was a way for Mankind to show The Undertaker what it's like to be Mankind. The promo gets a little weird when Foley also mentions his kids, and how quote, white trash throws rocks at his house while screaming die mankind die. He then talks about how he can't keep his kids safe because he's always at work, getting spot on by fans wearing undertaker shirts and earning less money than pretty boys in the opening matches while Foley works the main events. This episode of Raw was filled with work shoots both in the ring and on the mic. Foley is such an engrossing storyteller though. He's so believable and it does feel like he's talking from the heart. Mankind then shows everyone the surprise he has for The Undertaker. It's a Mankind leather mask. Foley says after in your house, he and The Undertaker will be just like twins. Taker's voice is then heard in the arena as footage of the fireball incident gets played on the Titan Tron. Undertaker says Mankind knows nothing about hell, fire and brimstone. And in your house, Mankind is going to learn all about these things when he feels the heat. Taker has sentenced Foley to eternal damnation and he says the flesh will burn from Mankind's bones at the pay per view. Mankind now has to spend eternity paying for his crimes. Raw ends this week with Mankind vs Steve Austin. WCW Nitro ends with The Giant vs Scott Steiner. We also have a DDP promo. And guess what, the Steiner vs Giant match doesn't even take place. Dungeon of Doomers, Conan and Hugh Morris attack Scott on the entranceway. The Giant comes out to save Scott and he no sells a chair shot from Morris. Steiner and Giant end up chasing Conan and Morris back up the entranceway. They give each other a hug and the crowd boos. This was a bad move from WCW, I'm not sure if time constraints led to this decision, but it's bad when a main event match doesn't even make it to the ring. DDP comes out afterwards and he's in bad shape following his main event match last night. Dallas said he took on one of the biggest superstars in wrestling last night, and if anyone would have said two years ago that Dallas would be in a main event pay per view match, they would have been called nuts. Last night when Dallas learned that Savage was about to slap Kimberly, Paige says he would have killed Randy if he got his hands on him. Winning isn't everything, Dallas is hurt, Savage is hurt, but the fight between these two is not over. Dallas challenges Macho to come down to the ring and Savage accepts, Randy is prepared to fight Dallas one more time, but then Hulk Hogan and the NWO come out. Hogan tells Savage that Hollywood will take care of DDP tonight, Hulk begins approaching the ring, but then the stinger shows up and he lands on the entranceway, getting in between DDP and the New World Order. Sting throws a baseball bat to Dallas and the NWO freeze. The babyfaces get in the ring and Nitro goes off the air with Dallas and Sting standing side by side while the NWO look on. Because Steve Austin is having his second match tonight, it's confirmed that Stone Cold will face Bret Hart at In Your House Revenge of the Taker. Sid was out with neck issues, apparently, and the big man would come back in a few months time. Mankind takes a hard bump on the rampway when Austin pulls off a suplex, Owen and Davey show up via split screen and man, these two have been all over Raw this week haven't they? Owen says the WWF just screwed Brett once again by booking him in a pay per view match while he isn't even here. Brett's already beaten Austin twice, third time's the charm, but the conspiracy against the Hart family continues in the World Wrestling Federation. Mankind goes to hit Steve Austin with a chair but Stone Cold blocks it with a kick. 
Mankan gets dropped over the guardrail and the two continue to fight on the outside just like their previous match on Raw, though I'm pretty sure that was an opening match and not the main event. When things finally get in the ring, Austin scoops up Foley and he lays in a ton of right hands, followed by a kick to the midsection. Austin nails a back elbow and Stone Cold saves this week's Reliving the War by applying a chin lock. Thanks Steve. Austin releases the hold when he notices Bulldog and Owen in the audience, and when we come back from break, it's Steve who finds his chin getting a good old working over by Mankind. Austin gets out with a jawbreaker, but he misses a follow up elbow drop. Mankind ends up hitting Austin with a double axe handle on the outside after exposing the concrete floor. Mankind then performs an elbow drop from the apron to the outside, and Foley tries to hit Austin with a pile driver on the rampway, but Austin pushes him away. Foley takes a really rough looking bump here. When the match gets back inside the ring, Owen and Davey begin moving through the crowd. The Legion of Doom show up and the two tag teams begin circling the ring, but neither team gets involved in the match. Instead, Vader hits the ring and he inadvertently hits Mankind, making the referee ring the bell and making Austin get out of the ring to allow Foley and Vader fight it out. Paul Bear ends up stopping the fight and Raw ends with Vader and Foley hugging it out in the middle of the ring. It wasn't a bad main event, it was way better than what Nitro had to offer, but it was also very inconclusive. I'm awarding this week's point to WWF Raw. The Shawn Michaels promo was good, Steve Austin had two decent matches, and the stuff with Ken Shamrock I thought was interesting too. Nitro started off well, but the Steiner and Giant stuff kinda leaves a bad taste in your mouth. The Sting appearance though was great. Not the best Raw or Nitro we've seen, but I'd recommend watching Raw this week if you had to choose only one. Here's how I would have scored it on the head to heads. And with this victory, Raw now has 32 points, Nitro has 36 points, and we've had 10 ties overall. In the TV ratings, Nitro went up to a 3.7, while Raw went down to a 2.2. Next week we'll see WWF matches from the United States, South Africa and Kuwait including Rocky Maivia vs Savio Vega and Crush vs Ahmed Johnson. Doesn't sound too good does it? <laughs> and on Nitro, WCW tries to make up for this weeks final 10 minutes by presenting a Kevin Nash vs Lex Luger main event. I hope you join me next week, thank you so much for watching and take care.